Welcome back to Forecast Lab, a mix of spring and summer patterns across the country. Organized severe weather has been quite sparse over the past week, chase season 2025 failing to come together. Hudson Bay thermal troughing continues to shape the weather east of the Rockies. Out west, subtropical ridging emerges and a heat wave will be developing during the weekend from the Pacific to the Rockies. There is our surface map this afternoon. Big old polar high across the Great Lakes, across Minnesota and North Dakota. Cool air all the way into the central plains, into the Midwest. Widespread 60s and also the drier dew points down in the 40s and 50s. We should be seeing that coming up to the 60s and even the low 70s this time of year, like what you see here in Kentucky. The dry line is established from a triple point near Woodward. Dry line south towards the Big Bend and a frontal system from southern Oklahoma into southern Colorado. We are expecting storms later this evening along that frontal boundary and near the triple point. Storms as well throughout Texas and in parts of the southeastern U.S. Focus on the northeast. We've got a mix of temperatures warm in New England and Maine. Temperatures in the 70s and 80s. We're expecting 82 at Bangor, 81 at Caribou, and 78 at Boston. But back here in this cloud cover, much cooler, Pennsylvania down into the 50s with 60s into Virginia. Not much in the way of warnings or advisories. We do have some marine advisories, small craft along the Atlantic coast from Martha's Vineyard, Long Island, down the coast into the Carolinas today, tonight, and Thursday. In the Great Lakes, a mild afternoon, 60s and 70s there. Same story in the Midwest itself. And plenty of rain to go around from Pennsylvania down the Atlantic seaboard and another area of rain closer to this upper level low across Wisconsin, Lake Michigan, and Indiana. What is this upper level low, you may ask? Let's take a gander. The center of it is actually in southwestern Minnesota, but kind of a broad area of a uh, vortex there. This is a vertically stacked cold core low, the polar front jet flowing around the periphery of that, and a southern stream further south along the southern U.S. border. Anyway, we've got deep southwesterly flow across the northeast, some troughing responsible for that band of convection from Indiana into Wisconsin, and more of a lighter flow out towards Pennsylvania and Maryland. The southeastern region looking a little bit drier, but we've got afternoon storms popping up across Florida into southern Georgia. The current satellite imagery showing plenty of moisture across the region. The Gulf of Mexico looks fairly clear same thing out near the Gulf Stream, some showers out there, however, quite warm. We are looking at low 90s from Jacksonville towards a Lake City, 93 at Tampa, and that's probably about the maximum that we'll see today. They could squeak out 94 there at Tampa. Most of the rest of the region close to 90 or just above. Yesterday, across the southeastern region, we had this MCS bolting eastward during the day into Alabama and Georgia and into the Carolinas, another cluster moving through the deep south after dark, and then another wave of showers developing around the Big Bend area of Texas, southwest Texas, and moving into the western Gulf Coast area this morning. This is about where we're at right now. Plenty of showers and storms from Beaumont southward, also around Tyler, Palestine, Jacksonville, and back towards Brownwood. And we're expecting more development in this area this afternoon. The Storm Prediction Center has a slight risk out for that area. The main concern is gusty outflow wind with a small chance of large hail. Tornadoes not really expected. At the current time, we've got some storms around San Saba, maybe Goldthwaite. Lampasas somewhere around there, putting out this anvil, and they're feeding along this outflow boundary right there. Looks like another outflow boundary on the backside. This storm here around Albany or Throckmorton looks like that might be getting cut off just a little bit.
other imminent convection down in this area. I guess that's around Mason and Junction down towards Sonora and other storms in the Davis Mountains. In the northern plains, we can see to a certain extent that upper level low. However, this is mostly detecting low cloud. The water vapor imagery shows things a little bit more clearly. And I think we have one lobe of that upper level low across the Huron Aberdeen area in South Dakota. And it's kind of elongated like that into southern Minnesota. Further south in Kansas and Colorado, storms ongoing. We've got a slight risk for severe thunderstorms in the northern panhandles, northwest Oklahoma, southwestern Kansas, and eastern Colorado. A few tornadoes are possible from Woodward to Burlington, Colorado. There's a look at the radar out of Dodge City. Storms at around Liberal, Kansas, down to about Springfield. Other storms around Clayton. All of those have severe thunderstorm warnings on them for 60 mile an hour winds and quarter sized hail. Temperatures are warm across the Rockies this afternoon as they come under the influence of upper level ridging. Temperatures this afternoon ranged from 70s along the front range to 80s and 90s in the Four Corners area. Another day of 100s in the southwest deserts, looking at 103 for Phoenix, 102 for Needles. The San Joaquin Valley seeing mid-80s around Sacramento and low 90s down around Bakersfield and Fresno. 73 for Los Angeles, 68 for San Diego. Extreme heat watch has been issued Friday and Saturday for southern Nevada and the northern Mojave Desert, including Barstow and Death Valley. Temperatures into the 100s and 110s. Heat advisory Friday and Saturday for the entire San Joaquin Valley, including Bakersfield, Fresno, Sacramento, Redding, and into the coastal ranges. Temperatures there could be as high as 106 with warm overnight lows. A cold front is approaching the Pacific Northwest coast. However, ahead of the cold front, warm conditions. 82 at Seattle for this afternoon, 84 at Portland, 86 at Spokane, 90s throughout the Columbia River Basin, the Snake River Valley, and it is looking to be much warmer through the weekend. We may see 100 at Boise on Saturday. And then we head out into the Pacific and up to Alaska. A maritime polar air mass covering the North Pacific Ocean. A new cold front moving through western Alaska affecting the North Slope. They're getting some snow at this hour. Temperatures in the mid-20s. But in the Alaskan interior around Fairbanks and Anchorage, 50s. Current temperatures still in the 50s, but 60 there at McCarthy. McGrath, okay. So that's the way it looks there. In Canada, some warmer air has been making it into the Northwest Territories. Temperatures in the 50s and 60s. Hot conditions in the prairies, 70s and 80s. We have a heat warning in most of Alberta. We're expecting mid to upper 80s for this afternoon. Overnight lows near 60. The very latest conditions, 80s throughout the entire province, 86 at Fort McMurray. That's going to be the hot spot. We've got 82 at Edmonton and 79 at Calgary. And as we move to the east, we get into air quality warnings and advisories due to wildfire smoke. That's going to be north and east of Winnipeg and the western border areas of Ontario and much of northern Manitoba, and I've drawn that smoke plume. And there's the infrared imagery showing hot spots coming from wildfires in central and eastern Saskatchewan. Then we go through the morning hours and pick up the visible imagery. Look at that smoke plume. That is quite a mess, extending all the way up towards Thompson and into the Hudson Bay region. Checking out the potential for severe weather. Let's take this 850 millibar chart through tomorrow. So the setup by 1 p.m. looking like this. Cold air flowing through the pain handles. This is going to be a cold front somewhere in here. Now looking at the moisture, the green lines, we do see 12 grams per kilogram. What is 12 grams per kilogram? 
Well, we can look at an actual SKU-T diagram. There's the 12 gram per kilogram line right there. Intersects 850 at that spot. And that corresponds to a dew point temperature of about 14 Celsius. It's going to be about 57 Fahrenheit, which is pretty good for 850. So that does correspond to some of the better tropical moisture. We would like to see 14 and 16 for any significant severe weather, but we don't really have that. However, it is going to be enough to support some severe weather in parts of the big country, the Concho Valley, the Pecos River region a little bit later. This is 1 p.m. That's going to push southward during the evening. And by this time, it's already picking up some convective wind plots right there and some deformation of the mixing ratio field. Then we recharge for Friday. There's the Friday 1 p.m. map. Cold advection coming through the entire Great Plains. Some backed flow right in here, so some severe weather potential. Possibly in this area here, West Texas. It's going to be pretty far to the southwest. Also, some thunderstorms possible out here in the southeastern U.S., and up into the Carolinas as well, near the nose of the moisture axis. The weekend is looking pretty dry across much of the country. Some return flow gets established in the high plains of Texas and Oklahoma. And it looks like we're already setting up for Monday somewhere, maybe in southwestern Kansas. Let's see how that comes together. Yeah, there's some sort of frontal boundary right in here. And the moisture is flowing north. There's the moisture axis, so yeah, northwest Oklahoma, southern Kansas, maybe the Panhandles. Low level jet gets established overnight. Pretty good low pressure area up there in Montana. This looks kind of like a dry line setup, maybe a cold front. No, that's going to be a dry line, I think, for Tuesday and Wednesday. Looks increasingly active on the Great Plains, maybe a little bit far up to the north in that area there. 60 knot jet by Friday, so it's in increasingly better, although it will be kind of far to the north, and that's going to be the last chart that I have, and maybe some potential redeveloping there in the panhandles for June 7th. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at that forecast. We don't have a whole lot going on for today. Typical spring weather will be very wet across Kansas and Oklahoma overnight. Then going into tomorrow, let's bring this forward. 7 a.m., there's 1 p.m. The Storm Prediction Center has a very large marginal risk for severe storms across all of the southeastern U.S., north of Orlando, south of Nashville, and Charlotte. Quite a large area with isolated spots of high wind and hail, and an isolated tornado possible in parts of northeastern Arkansas and the Memphis area. Texas could be problematic in west Texas around the Pecos River region, Midland, Carlsbad, Hobbs. Some of the problem areas may extend into the warm sector as far as Brownwood. Big Springs, and some of those storms could produce gusty convective winds, some small hail, and an isolated tornado. All right, so let's go into Friday. This front is gradually sinking south. More storms for South Texas and the Hill Country. And this is when we really start pouring on the heat in California. Temperatures will be coming up into the 100s, 103 for Fresno. And Bakersfield, 84 for Los Angeles, 77 for San Francisco, and 74 for San Diego. Same story in Arizona, up to 106 at Phoenix and 99 for Tucson. The rain shifts into the southeastern states, into the Carolinas, Georgia, and Florida. Some drying coming in behind this front. A slight risk for severe storms in the central Carolinas, basically in this area here. Wind damage and large hail are the main concerns. For Saturday, looks quiet across the country. Some residual showers in the northeastern U.S. The heat wave peaks out west. Saturday, we're looking for 100 at Fallon and Lovelock in Nevada. 99 at Reno. 105 for Fresno. 104 for Bakersfield. 99 for Reno. 
and this will slip a little bit to the east on Sunday. And this front, can't miss that, that's bringing relief to parts of the northwestern U.S. And with that front, we'll see an increase in precipitation very gradually going into Sunday and Monday. And there could be some significant rains across Montana over the three-day period, maybe starting Sunday, two to four inch amounts possible in western Montana. And that could be a pretty significant rain event there. For Monday, the heat wave concentrates in the northern plains. No one is forecasting 90, but we could see upper 80s from Sioux Falls to Minneapolis. For Tuesday, the heat continues moving to the west, focusing on the Midwest and Great Lakes area, some storms breaking out from Iowa into South Dakota, and this front continues to move eastward. And it's dry along the southern periphery due to the influence of that upper level ridge, and a secondary front back there in the Intermountain region. And a quick look ahead into midweek Wednesday, Thursday, typical June weather, Starting to focus on that favored area during the summertime, western Kansas, Nebraska, and South Dakota. All of them will see some typical weather for this time of year. That's all I've got. Yeah, since Canada came up, you can have a look at that for friends up north. I'm not going to go over this in detail because I haven't really analyzed that, but I can see a warm sector right in here. Cold air flowing into British Columbia for Wednesday. Well, that's tonight. All right, then for Thursday, tomorrow, cold air crossing British Columbia, warm air flowing north into Yellowknife. And you can follow along right there, some good showers moving into Banks Island, Victoria Island, and I guess Elifrignus Land. Can't remember the, oh, Melville Island. My Arctic geography gradually coming back to me there. That's quite a wraparound up there snow on the western side and there's the weekend pretty good system coming through quebec another big one into nunavut and the northwest territories that's uh could have some storms pretty far north there it's like a little squall line right there between churchill and baker lake anyway that gets occluded wraps up and there we are at wednesday pretty potent system coming into northern british columbia for thursday and that's the end of the sequence. And that chart sequence, definitely useful for those of you in Alaska. If you're in Alaska, please post and let me know you're there. And we can continue to cover that in more detail. All right, it's been a very long day. So I'm going to go ahead and get this wrapped up and post it. Hope you enjoy it. Please subscribe and like and comment. Very important for this channel, especially if you're not doing the Patreon support thing, we do need your other form of support. That's those likes and subscribes and letting people on social media know that we're here. That's uh, that grassroots type of involvement. I want to see a little bit more of that. And you guys can really help with that. There's always so much I can do here. So many hours in the day. All right. Hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday night. Take care. And we'll see you back here on Friday. Bye bye.